Welcome back to my cycling channel. I am so excited about today's video. I have the Wahoo Element Rome and I have the Hammerhead K2. We're gonna be comparing these head to head detail. We're gonna be looking at the price. We're gonna unbox both of these. We're gonna look at the initial setup, the data pages, what the unit looks and feels like, the buttons, uh, the different mounts that they use, the apps that they use, uploading your data, maps and the navigation, how these devices sync with Strava, Training Peaks, other apps, how the app creates maps, imports maps, on bike navigation, lap function, how it handles Strava Live segments. We're gonna be doing all of that in today's video. And what's so cool is that I'm gonna be giving away this Wahoo Roam. It's brand new, I just got it yesterday. I ordered it from Competitive Cyclist. Competitive Cyclist, if you're watching this, I'm giving you a shout out, hook a brother up. I love to do more of these reviews. Any products you got you wanna send me, I would love it. Also, very important, guys, I paid full price for both of these units. This one was $400 US, and this one was $379 US dollars. More on the giveaway at the end of the video. I just wanna pop in here real quick because I'm editing the video. It's super long, it's super detailed. Make sure you look at the contents so you can click and jump around wherever you're interested in. All right, guys, back to the video. All right, so let's unbox these. We're gonna start with the Wahoo Element Roam. And right off the bat, the material of the box is a lot nicer than the material of the hammerhead. Let's see if we can do these at the same time. So here are the outer shells. You pull it out like so. Start here. It has these cards, a little startup pamphlet here. You pull this little drawer out for the hammerhead. Like so, we'll get rid of that. And then the hammerhead comes with the mount. It comes with these little USB-C ports. It comes with the adapter, a little Allen key, and it comes with a tether. I use the tether, I really like the tether. And then it comes with a premium braided cord. So that's everything in the box. Wahoo has their arrow mount. It also comes with a little screw if you want to attach. You screw it through there and it holds so you can't take the unit off. It also comes with this mount that you can attach with these zip ties that they put in the box. Yeah, so their cord is much shorter and it's uh, not nearly as good quality. Micro USB, USB-C, I definitely like that. USB-C I think is where everything is going. Let's peel off. So I do appreciate that. I like that arrow design. I like it that you can put the, the screw in it. I think that's great. But this quarter turn mount, I've never been a fan of. This one is more solid than the Garmin one for sure, but it's still a quarter turn mount and the only thing holding it in are those two tabs. I personally not a fan of the quarter turn mount, especially once you start using this guy. It's absolutely incredible, look at that. I love this mount. I love this mount, guys. Um, and what's cool is it gives you uh, this plate. You put the plate in like so, and then you can use it as a quarter turn. Awesome, awesome crew, very innovative. Let's look at the fit and finish. I definitely think Wahoo has a nice fit and finish of their device, but very similar to Hammerhead. One of the features that Hammerhead has over the Wahoo is, in, is you can put a SIM card in the unit. Uh, that's something that I would never do personally. I guess it would give you internet access to the device. And once we get into the device, you'll see that you you know, you know have a lot of options here, especially when you're connected to the internet. You can download Strava segments during a ride, things like that. But let's power up these devices and take a look at them. So the Hammerhead has four buttons. We have two on each side. And the Wahoo looks like it has four, five, six buttons. All right, guys, it's the next day and I screwed something up big time. I have to reshoot the whole thing. But what happened was, I don't know if you can see here, but I had the screen brightness turned up way too bright. So when I saw the footage, you couldn't see anything on the screen of the crew because I had the brightness turned all the way up. While I have these devices here, we're looking at the buttons. I find the buttons a lot easier to press with the K2 and they're definitely easier to press. And you can see these ones on the side. They're, they're smaller, they're harder to press. These are a lot more responsive. 
these ones on the front of the of the Wahoo, uh, you kind of you kind of like pinch the device like that as you're pressing them. When we're talking, we're talking about syncing these two with the apps. The Wahoo needs the phone. Like when you come into this splash page here, you basically have your data pages that you can scroll through, give you more data fields, give you less data fields as you use these two side buttons, as you can see here. You can only scroll through the page by pressing this button like so only menu that you have on the on the Wahoo because everything else is done on the phone with the K2 everything's done on the device it syncs to the app on your phone and on your desktop but everything you do on the desktop and the app on the phone you can do on the device and it like goes to a cloud so you don't need to have a phone to use the K2, which is which is pretty cool. I'm gonna show you the app on the Wahoo first, and then we're gonna look at the K2. When you have the Wahoo app, you have workout history, profile, settings. In the workout tab is where you add your sensors, you decide which type of ride you're doing, and here's where you can add a workout. Go to your profile. From, from your profile, you can go to connected apps, you connect Strava Training Peaks. I've already set it up. And this is where you import your routes. So you go back to workout, choose a route. You can see here are all my Strava routes. They update automatically. And then you can pick one, select route, and then it'll get sent to your device. The Wahoo app does not allow you to build routes. You build routes on Strava and then they automatically sync to your Wahoo app. If we go over to settings, you can customize all of your data pages here and then you organize everything and then it does it on your device you cannot configure your data pages or your data fields on the device it has to be done on the app it has kicker control you can add that in planned workouts we're going to look at workouts a little bit later when we get on the bike strava live segments this shows you the Strava Live segments page where you can configure it and set it up the way that you like it here's your live tracking uh, here's your maps where you download your maps. Auto pause, Wi Fi network. Profile pages where you put in your power zones and you sync training peaks, today's plan, etc. History, these show the rides I was testing it. Here are the rides that I was testing it with. And so that's basically it for the app. Now let's look at the K2. So here's the K2 app. And like I said, you don't need to have the app to use this device at all. When you first get the device, you wanna to go to settings, you go to hammerhead account, and then you log into your account. So now let's say I have an issue with the device, the device breaks, I buy a new device. All my data pages, all my information is stored in the cloud. So once I sign into the device, it remembers all of my settings. Rider profile, this is where you put in your weight, your FTP zones, and then here's where you connect your connected accounts, uh, sync automatically, Strava training peaks. One of the big drawbacks with K2 is it does not connect with as many apps as the Wahoo does. I would love if this connected to, to today's plan, which I really don't like at all, and I don't know why they haven't set that up. Turn by turn, distance to next turn, you can put this stuff on, automatic cues. Key buttons, you can hide the buttons so they come up on the screen. I have them off, I don't like having the buttons on the screen. So that way you don't have to use the physical buttons and, and you can just only use the screen, which is pretty cool. This is where you download all of your maps. It has about 30 gigs of space, connect to Wi-Fi, sensors, phone pairing. Now the phone pairing with the K2 right now is not does not work well you will miss notifications. The Wahoo, I haven't missed one yet. They're working on it, but it's something that they need to work on. Airplane mode, measurement, storage, factory reset, there we go. So here are the, data, the standard profiles that come loaded. The way you configure them is like this. You go to profiles, got hills, and I think this is much more intuitive than the, than the Wahoo. Uh, edit layout, it brings what they call these cards. So this is an elevation map, and here you have your selection up here. You can put you can put elevation with the map on the top. You can put elevation with the map on the bottom. Data screens on the top, so you can pick your power, your cadence. And then here are the data pages. You can have 10 total. You can have one on the top, and that's how you select your different data pages. Uh, once you go in, you can select it here. Now, let's say I start a ride. I can pull down pull down halfway 
and then I can pull down full way. We can turn auto pause off, audio alerts on off. Battery save mode is really cool. It turns the screen off. If you're doing like a really long, like eight, nine, 10 hour ride, use battery save mode and then it automatically turns the screen off. It turns off some other features and then really helps prolong the life of the battery. Here you have Wi-Fi, you can turn it on and off. And if you long hold any of these, it brings you in to the field itself. So one of the things that I love is it has the ride time and it stays in the top left-hand corner. It shows the battery percentage and the time. That stuff stays in the top ribbon and I really like it. You hold the bottom right button to bring you out into the settings. One of the best things about the K2 is the maps. So if we go and we look at these maps and we compare these maps real quick, I mean, you can see, absolutely see. One thing I can't stand about this, about this Wahoo is I have to go through all the pages. So I just hit page like that and it just scrolls in one direction. So if I miss it, I gotta go through them all again. This too, look at the difference in the screen. This screen, I have it turned all the way down and it doesn't show up on the camera as well in real life, but you can see this one's turned all the way down and look at how good it looks. If you turn it all the way up, Look at, look at that screen. You can't even see it on the camera and that's why I had to scrap the last video. The maps on this thing are incredible. I'll show you the turn by turn direction for both units when we get out there. Now let's look at how we upload maps. Okay, so there's a few ways to upload maps on your K2. You can go to your Hammerhead K2 and you go to Roots, you go to Add Root, you can go to Create. So you can create a route easily on your phone like this, right? And like, it sets these points, you can move them like that. Then you can undo, see I made a mistake there, undo. And it's very easy to make a route on your phone. And then so you do done, save and exit, test route. Okay, you go to the device, routes, test route already there, awesome. Another way to do routes is it automatically syncs with Strava. So if you do a route in Strava, it'll automatically sync to your account and go on your device just like the Wahoo does. The Wahoo, I think you have to push it to your device, but it automatically goes to your phone because everything is done on the device itself. Any Strava route that you do will automatically get pushed to the device and you don't need to use your phone. Um, what you do need to use your phone though is for root importing routes. So let's say a friend sends you a link to a route that he created and you're gonna ride the next day or that weekend or whatever. You go import and then you insert the website link right there, hit upload, and it'll automatically send the route to your device. Workouts are the exact same thing. You put the workouts in training peaks and then they automatically sync to your device. Uh, you just pull up training peaks. You can't do it on your phone. You have to use a desktop. Workouts, I'm not a fan of. I've never used them. I've tried them multiple times. I've tested them multiple times, but I've never used a workout for a workout. Uh, I've just messed around with it because I love this tech stuff. But I'll show you them both out on the bike. The Element doesn't come with a tether. I really love the tether. I've lost my Garmin a few times because of this, these crappy tabs. So I always use a tether. I wrap it around the handlebars. I'll show you how I do that once we're out on the bike. But let's get out on the road and let's take a look at the things that I mentioned and see how these devices stack up when you need them the most, which is on the bike. Let's go. All right, we're out on the bike and here are the screens you're gonna be met with as you turn on the device. So first thing you're gonna need to do is sync your sensors. And to do that on the Wahoo, you hit the side button here. That brings you out into the main menu and you go down to sensors, add sensor, and then it'll bring up the sensors. Same thing up on the K2, hit sensors, hit the plus button in the bottom right, and then you can choose between Bluetooth in the center here, M plus or DI2, your sensor will come up and you just hit pair. There we go, save heart rate. Add the heart rate. You can see it's saved. Add the heart rate strap. Now we want to add a root. So on the K2, you grab the two outside buttons. Add root. Let's do three hour Tucson. Boom, root's loaded. Let's open our app. View roots. Three hour Tucson. 
select root, root loaded, there we go. So to exit this screen, we press the left button, and then to start the ride, this one's already started because we loaded the root. The crew, we hit start, here we go. So as you can see here, I'm off route. It looks like the K2 is doing a much better job of trying to get me back on the route. So auto pause work well for both. The red is the reroute and then the yellow is the normal route. So it wants me to go all the way up there and then come back, which is kind of stupid. I don't know why it's ask, not asking me to do a U-turn. Okay, so if you hit route, it gives you the cues. You can mute the route, and I guess you come down here, and that's the way you look at the different cues is by hitting the route. You can hit back like so. To look at the root cues on the K2, you pull up and then there are all the root cues. All right, let's look at how the segments look. So here we go, we're approaching the segment. You can see on the K2, it shows the countdown. I do not see it on the Wahoo. There we go. Looks like in the middle of the segment, you can pick the segment. I know on the K2, you can swipe between segments. If there's another segment, it gives you a pop-up and you can swipe between them if there's two. I think you can do the same thing on the uh, on the Wahoo. So it does give you a lot of information here, your overtime, time behind. Um, I do like the GUI on the K2. I know that they're improving this and they're coming out with new updates that I'm really excited where you can pull this up and you can have the whole page. Right now, I think these are pretty close. You know, the Wahoo's actually pretty nice. I like both of these, pretty good. One of the things I'm gonna show you is how you deal with the segments. So you go to settings, Strava Live segments, and then here's where all your segments are alphabetically. And the way you decide who you're, what you're gonna chase, what time you're gonna chase, is you keep whatever one highlighted you like, and then you hit, so if I just wanna go after the KOM, I hit close, and it's only gonna sh show me the KOM time. If I wanna go after Wolf, Wolf is just behind me, the time just behind my time, Carrot is the time just ahead of me, and that's how you manage all of your segments. On the Wahoo, you can only select whether you're going after the KOM or your PR during the segment on the device itself. This is what the routes look like. You can see they both have the chevrons. You can zoom out, you can zoom in. I can't stand how you have to scroll all these pages. Look at this. I keep skipping it. What I love about the K2 is you can pan like so. And let's say I know my friend lives up on this corner. I can drop a pin, hit the ride to, it shows me 2.9K. When I get there, I can do that and it'll bring me back to the map. Absolutely love that. But to add the workout on the Karoo, you go to the home page, you go to workouts, cycling workout, click, it's gonna add the workout. We're gonna remove the root by double tapping, and now we have our workout. We're gonna add the workout by pressing the left button on the Wahoo, planned workouts, select. The Wahoo comes with a bunch of loaded workouts. We're just gonna pick one of the loaded workouts. The K2 does not come with any loaded workouts. So let's select that one and let's see how this works. So the K2 has its own page for workouts like so. So as you hit the next function here, it's gonna automatically hit lap for you. So here's our target watch. This is all the information. So these are the two different workout pages. These are very similar. I never, I don't use either of these. So if you're interested, these are what they look like. Now, if we wanna end the ride, we hit on the K2, we hit stop, end, yes. So you can go through and look at your rides. You can look at your week total here, which is pretty cool. The way you end the ride here on the K2 is completely different. You hit stop, then you hit the left button, then you hit the right button, and it brings you to this splash screen where you can check your heart rate, your cadence, your power, ascent and your average speed and then here you can change the name of the ride call it test teddy no we'll call it test you can give it a description change the bike and what's really cool you commute and then here you can choose where it uploads and when you change this description and you hit upload it will automatically upload to Strava with this information and training peaks. 
but I unclicked them because I don't want to upload them uh, just because it's a test ride. So let's get inside. Let's give our final thoughts on these devices, tell you what I think and which what device I prefer if you couldn't tell already. Let's do it. I think that's it. I think I covered everything, guys. I really love both of these devices, but I like the K2 a little bit more. What I really love about the K2, and this is why I, all the way back almost two years ago, why I bought the K1 is the updates every two weeks. I think by the end of this year, 2020, 21, the K2 will be one of the best devices, if not the best device you can buy because they're coming out with some really cool updates. I had a chance to sit down and do a Zoom meeting with a few guys on the development team at Hammerhead and they showed me some of the upcoming stuff and I'm just so excited about it. I just think it's so cool. But I also think that the Wahoo is an amazing device as well. I think this suits a lot of people. My wife would really love a device like this. It's simple, it works, it's easy to set up, and there's not too much playing around with it. The hammerhead, you know, with the updates and all the things changing, it could really be overwhelming for some people. These are both great devices. I like the K2, but I have friends of mine that would much rather prefer the Wahoo Roam. What do you guys like? Let me know in the comments. Would love to hear from you. Now the giveaway, the most important part. Guys, this is it. This device could be yours. All you gotta do to enter is click the link in the description. Why am I doing this giveaway? It's for my viewers. It's for my subscribers. I love you guys so much. The journey of starting this channel less than six months ago, and I think it's growing pretty good. I'm proud of myself, and I wanna give back to you guys. I have such a fortunate life, and like I said, I'm gonna always be trying to do a giveaway, and. This is the biggest one I've ever done. So please enter, I hope you win. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please hit that button. And that's it guys, please like the video if you haven't liked it and comment, love to hear from you. I keep saying that, but that's it guys. I'll see you on the next video. I'll see you soon, bye.